I don't think the evidence is very good that anyone can change their sexual orientation. Does this mean that a highly motivated indiv individual couldn't go to a group and through a lot of work change their behavior? I imagine so. I imagine they could. But that doesn't mean they change their sexual orientation. And if you really want to know whether anyone can actually change sexual orientation, if you really look into those uh, reports carefully, uh, the data aren't very good. It, I, I would say uh, that it's not likely that it's ever worked, and it certainly doesn't work for most of the people that try it. If a mother or father were thinking of taking a child into reparative therapy, I would really want them to enter family counseling because I think what's going on is that there's tremendous social stressors going on in terms of the family, causing them to feel in such a way that they have to change their child. I'd want to make sure that the parents really had informed consent so that they knew really clearly that the data shows that this isn't going to work to make your child straight, but what it could do is increase the harm to that child in terms of making them feel more depressed, potentially more suicidal. So I'd want to make sure that there was true informed consent around that. And then preferably I'd want to see the family go into a therapy situation where it's family therapy where what we really work on is parental acceptance, where we have a situation where the parents are not going in to try to change their child, but are rather going in to try to support their child. There's been a number of studies that have looked very rigorously and very scientifically at uh, reorientation therapies, reparative therapies, and they have found uh, a number of serious flaws. First of all, they, they tend to misrepresent themselves to clients. Uh, you know, the American Psychological Association has some pretty strict rules um, about ethics. And you cannot uh, sort of market a therapy to a client under false pretenses. You have to be, you know, in order to, to, to be a, a, you know, a member of, in good standing of the American Psychological Association, you have to be accurate and honest with your clients about what they can experience as a result of the therapy. And the APA has you know, found that the majority of these therapies are being misrepresented, that therapists are saying, we can change your orientation, when in fact all of the data, all of the data suggests that that's not the case. Uh, sometimes they're successful in helping people to change their behavior, um, just like any of us can, can you know, alter our behavior at will. But they say that the attraction, the same-sex attractions will disappear. They don't. So, it's, so that's problematic in that it's unethical that they're leading people to think that they may experience something that they will not experience. And the methods that they use to achieve this you know, aim that they, they can't achieve tend to be very aversive. They use techniques sometimes involving the administration of, of uh, you know, drugs to induce nausea, um, aversion therapy. They tend to leave individuals feeling worse about themselves, uh, having the same feelings that they had before, but having a whole bunch of extra bad feelings along with them. And so they really violate this notion of first do no harm. So these therapies are, uh, are marketed inaccurately. They don't actually have the effect that the therapists claim that they will have. And they do additional damage by using these sort of aversive techniques that leave people feeling greater shame, greater guilt, feeling worse about themselves as a result. So they do do harm.